Folks, we put in an underground propane tank, below ground, under, I guess it's underground, yeah. And uh, just, just about done with this project and had a chance to use a Kubota backhoe to dig out this hole. It was four, 14 foot long, six foot wide, and a little over four foot deep, all right? And unfortunately, I was not able to reuse all of the stuff that I dug out. It had too many rocks in it. Not a lot, but they really don't want rocks pressing up against the tank and all the other stuff. So I had to get a bunch of clean fill to bring in and put around it, but uh, we'll show you the whole project. It was, it was a lot of fun using that backhoe, but I don't know, I had some problems with it in the beginning, and that was either operator error or the controls are a little bit different than what I'm used to, but man, I tell you, that curl roll function, I had that totally backwards, programmed backwards in my head, and it took me a good half hour to like rewire my brain to use that thing correctly. But once I got that figured out, super easy to do and so knowing that we were gonna have to haul away a lot of this dirt anyways we used our farm support vehicle the mini dump which has a really nice bed on there and this was a good chance to test that out and see well I've been known to overload a trailer before and uh, I I didn't want to find out and so I kind of took it easy on it the first couple of loads to see just how much it would lift and dump and it seemed like no matter how much we put in there it didn't even strain the dump bed didn't when we went to dump it and, and uh, empty it out so really impressed with that it handled really well uh, I also I mean it's a fairly light machine right when you're loading well over a thousand pounds into that bed I didn't know if the front end of it might feel a little light but it it just carried the load really normally not on even ground up and down hills and around this uh, this area here now this ground is pretty easy soil to work with no big boulders no stumps or root balls or other obstructions, nothing buried down in here, so it was really easy. I was actually kind of curious if I would find, we've got some drains inside the barn and we don't know where they, they come out. They, they, they drain out somewhere and we don't know where. I, I thought I may hit one of those. Uh, did not hit that though. Didn't hit anything else, no wires, anything like that. We did have Miss Dig come out and, well, we asked them to mark this, but there was nothing to mark. So they just gave us a thumbs up that this area is free and clear which was to be expected anyway it's the back of our property all the incoming service comes from the front of the property and there wouldn't really be a point for it to be here now the underground tank was more expensive than the regular above ground tank that you get i was fortunate enough to be able to get a used underground tank at a pretty good price hey june what are you doing what's going on hi hi baby Okay. Whew. Here and gone, you know. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I was able to get a, an underground tank that was used. So somehow I just lucked into that and so I saved a decent amount of money. But, but our other tanks that are up front are buried and we had the temporary tank that was sitting out here and I just, I didn't like it a lot. So I wanted the underground tank, it's a 500 gallon. Uh, still has a monitor and everything on there so it's just easy to fill up they they come out when it gets to i think it's like i don't know 15 or 20 percent then they refill it uh, based on your usage we're heating just our barn with it i may put in a water heater at some point i caught just a little glimpse of uh the tech when he was out here setting the tank so they just have a truck that they bring out just with a little crane boom on it and set it right down in there just just one guy that came out here and did that i've seen him before he's been out here doing some service work for us on our other tanks as well really good guy and i'm gonna let you listen to him for just a second. I, I turned the the, uh, the video on right when he started to talk about it, but I wanted to let you guys know from a guy who does it, what the difference is between an above ground tank and a below ground tank. So if you wanna make that decision for yourself, you have a little bit more information. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Good. I was hoping to get a little bit of that video. Oh, let me start over? No, 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 you're good. You're good. Let's see what your uh, hold digging abilities are. Oh, 
think this end might be a touch lower. And with the you know the the connection is different, so this has a riser. Oh, the structure okay. of the tank is the same. Okay. Um, the big difference is is that bag on the back of my truck. Oh, that that's, white bag. That's the corrosion protection. Oh, okay. So that, that's a sacrificial anode bag. So it's a similar concept to um, the anode rod in your water heater oh, or interesting. an anode on your. Where does it go? That'll lay right next to the tank, um, and then it'll get wired to a wire on the structure of the tank. Huh. Interesting. Okay. So essentially, we're, and that's we're, good for the life of the tank. It's not. Oh. Um, we we have to test those periodically. So every three years, we have to test those. Um, and depending on soil conditions with the sandy soil, it'll probably burn it up a little bit faster. Okay. Um, is that going to sit inside the green riser then? Nope. That, that bag is actually going to sit. That's what I had to clear the spot for. We'll set that oh. right at the base. Okay. Um, oh, so there's a potential though. That we have to dig a so four foot hole in the future to. If the time ever comes where that bag is, is faulty and it has to be replaced, typically what we'll do is we'll just auger a hole with a postal bin. Oh, uh, okay. And, okay. and plant a bag next to it. Okay. Huh, cool. Right. No, but that's why we that's why we we show up every three years like we do on your house tanks. Okay. Um, and test them. Oh, those have them too. Yep. Oh, interesting. Yep. All right. Same thing. They yep. probably look like this then. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. the same exact tank. Okay. Oh, huh, cool. And so it was really easy work just kind of backfilling this. I had again a whole. Uh, well, I think I had 12 yards of sand brought in, and that was just an easy scoop and dump in here. Um, I do have to, I kind of kept it a little loose around that riser because I want to make sure that's nice and straight on there before it gets buried and set in place. You want that to be slightly above grade, mainly because they've had water, if it's right at grade, water pool right down in there and actually stay in that riser rise all the way to the top of it and freeze and then you can't even fill your tank in the winter time and so that's a major problem so that's why they want that grade above there or the riser above there and then you grade it out you slope it out slightly so that the water runs away not anything to do with being an issue for the tank itself mainly just for that riser area this is my first time using one of those Kubota backhoes the bigger ones I've used the small ones like on the BX I actually found that to be quite capable um, still Using a tractor backhoe is not nearly as convenient as a Mini X. You know, it's just so nice when you're on a, on a tracked machine just to be able to scoot along as you want to. With the tractor backhoe, it's almost like you're making like a pie shape, right? Because you have that center point and you're, you're scooping left and right and everything's kind of angling out from the center point where you're sitting on the backhoe. And I repositioned a few times, but it's kind of annoying to have to reposition all of the time. And in the end, this did not have to be a perfect hole by any means, and it certainly worked out just fine. But I, I don't know. I would still say this didn't change my mind on loving a backhoe. In fact, I had thought if I didn't have this particular machine here, I was actually just going to take my skid steer and scoop out a path right down in here and just scoop that out. I think that honestly would have been even faster than... Actually, I think it would have been a lot faster than using the backhoe. Uh, it's a bigger bucket on there. I would have just made a ramp that goes right down in here. And I think I could have knocked that out super quick. Um, but who knows? Maybe we'll have another hole to dig at some point, then we'll give that a shot. Now, we ship tractors and tractor attachments nationwide. So if you are in the market, give us a shot. See what we'll have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.
There you go. 